What's up, everyone? Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. I'm your host, Brad, joined by my co-host, Micah. Hey. Uh, we are flying solo again. Terrence does not have his laptop ready, and he was off work today. He did not feel like driving all the way over here. I can't believe him. I am a long way away from him. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, <laughs> Let's get right into this. It's actually going to be a light docket show, which, of course, means you're probably going to get tangents out the wazoo, but that's okay. Um, I played Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle this past weekend okay this is of course turn-based strategy game uh set in the mario and rabbits universe i'm i'm pleased to report that they actually have a storyline that makes sense as to how these two groups of characters came together i'm not going to explain it because it's malarkey but (laughs) there is a reason it there's a reason that exists which was nice to see I mean, um, is it any is it any more ridiculous than a couple of brooklyn plumbers fall down a warp pipe (laughs) <laughs> no, no, of course not. Of course not. So uh, I played as much of this game to realize that I don't need to really play any of this more for game. I uh, any more of this game. I I've said before in the lead up uh, to check, you know, seeing previews and stuff like that for this game that it is XCOM for babies, and <laughs> it is basically XCOM for babies. Um, I played through pretty much all of the first world. And they basically just take you through a series of progressively more difficult battles that where they, you know, show you a new mechanic in each battle that could have been, they could have doubled and tripled up on this. It's not that hard. Um, It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's definitely more forgiving than an XCOM. Um, It's, it's, it's all right. I mean, if you really like the rabbits, that's neat. Um, and if you want an easier way, because XCOM is, is is a bit of a deep end of the pool sort of thing. So if you want a more shallow end uh, introduction to uh, to uh, turn based strategy games, it's fine, uh, but it's not for me. It's not for me. I, I like my XCOM. I like my turn based strategy, uh, voraciously difficult and and <laughs> fucking punishing. And that is not what Mario and Rabbids. Uh, Kingdom Battle is so uh, I I didn't have to pay for the game. Um, I got it I, in a board game swap actually, so I'm just gonna probably trade it in and uh, yeah, that's it. Not 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 <laughs> sorry, not more enthusiastic about it, but it's just it was uh, it was whatever. Did so you got it at a board game swap? Did you like trade in a board game? Yeah, for basically that? I traded I traded someone a board game um, and and was given this in return. Which Are was, you upset? Like, do you wish you had your board game back? No, because I wasn't playing that board game. Like, like I only oh, trade that I'm not playing. So it doesn't do me I any gotcha. shit in my basement on a shelf. Well, on my trade shelf. I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. Well, good. I'm glad that uh, the Mario Rabbids experiment is okay if you like Mario and Rabbids. Yeah, or or again, if you just need like like turn based strategy for beginners, then uh, or, ta- you know. or tactical strategy for beginners, then there you go. Uh, yeah, I probably do need tactical strategy for beginners, but <laughs> no, I'm not it, gonna. It's play not, that. Again, it's not a bad game. It just it is what it is. It yeah, is is. I don't like the rabbits. I I don't like them. They I look like, like uh, there's there's. I mean, they really have no redeeming qualities they're 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 like and it's funny because i if i'm not mistaken they predated the minions but they're like a really shitty version like like a like a great value version of the minions i like to think of them as like great value wallace and gromit characters you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) like they just i can see why you would make that like just just gross as a quick aside i don't know about you but i cannot stand that style of animation that that studio uses for those wild the style of animation or the uh like the the look of it the it, the look of it i guess yeah because because my son th- that same studio did uh flushed away which is a movie that came out uh you know 12 or 13 years ago that uses a similar similar uh look and i'm just i'm mm-hmm. not a fan i'm not a fan it looks it looks cheap it looks like everything is made out of play-doh it's uh, that's what it's supposed to look like Apparently yeah. that's really cool in England, I guess. But there's a there's another movie coming out using that Wallace. I, and I saw it. Yeah, I yeah. saw it. I saw the preview for it. So yeah, no, thank you. No, it's it's not for me. Uh, but I'm I will say, flushed in, away. 
I'm, yes. I'm looking at flushed away and it looks like a bunch of uh rats falling down a toilet hole or something that, that is exactly the premise of the movie that's how it starts, <laughs> how it starts. a well-to-do uh posh rat gets flushed down the toilet accidentally and <laughs> live in the slums um in in kids movie reviews we're already up to a blazing start uh <laughs> three which i have watched approximately 20 times over the past three weeks gets a thumbs up much better than the second one I like yeah. it. <laughs> excellent uh yeah uh, i can't wait to be forced to sit through uh a bunch of kids well no i kind of do already depending on what my wife likes to watch <laughs> Uh, which is why I've seen Boss Baby. Oh, I couldn't even make it through thirty minutes of that. Like, 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 my wife had it on for my son, and like thirty minutes, I was like, I'm gonna go do something else. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> what is the complete opposite of Boss Baby? Is Bayonetta? Is, is it? Is it the complete opposite of Boss Baby? <laughs> I uh I bought Bayonetta two, and then I saw that if you buy Bayonetta two, you can buy you can get Bayonetta for ten dollars. So I went and bought oh, you that bought it digitally. Yeah, I yeah, to... yeah. Well, uh, and and if you bought for whatever reason Bayonetta one first, that was thirty dollars. But then you could buy Bayonetta two for thirty dollars. So. If you want those two games, they're sixty bucks. Um, yeah, I buy all my games digitally now. Like I remember, like way, 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 way back in single digit episodes, we were like, digital games. How are you gonna trade it in when you're done? And now it's just episode, you know, whatever the hell this is. And it's like, yeah, I only buy my games digital now. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, well, it's it, like I said, you weren't wasting enough money when you were buying stuff frivolously and then selling it back for. 40 cents on the dollar. Now you just want to flush all of the money down, <laughs> down with that posh rat that got flushed down the toilet. <laughs> um, yeah, Bayonetta, uh, Bayonetta 2 is uh, is fun. I popped in Bayonetta first just to see what it looked like, and it looked like what I remember it looking like. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't have uh, the Xbox copy on hand to compare the two you know, releases, but ever, it looked like what I, what I thought it, what I remembered it looking like. Bayonetta 2, um, is more the same. It, it is very fun. Um, it is a hack and slash like action game in the vein of, uh, Devil May Cry and things of that nature. Um, I'm playing the story, the story, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what that is, but, um, it, it's like it, it, it's to the point now where I'm just skipping the cutscenes, just to go back to uh, just to go back to uh, the actual combat of the game because the combat is still pitch perfect, like it's still the best. Um, looks a lot better. There's a higher polygon count, so everything looks a little better. Um, I played it in. Um, it looks better in. Uh, handheld mode, just because you have a smaller screen. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So it it looks a lot better in handheld mode, but I have a pro controller now, so I can actually play the thing with a big boy controller and not like like you know my my thumb is big enough to to cover all four of those face buttons. And it's that's a bit of a problem. Have I did I get your impression? When did you get that pro controller? Um, wow, I can't remember because I very rarely play the Switch. I can't remember if it was months ago. Before. I think we did, okay. but I think I told you that I was getting it, but I don't, I haven't, I haven't, okay. I don't know if I've spoken about it. What it's are you, good, what are you, man? Oh, it's, isn't it? Isn't it though? Like, like, shockingly really good. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, but my only problem, my only fucking problem is that the buttons are reversed. Right. Well, re reversed in in Xbox nomenclature, yes. We, yeah. well, as we said before, it's actually the Xbox buttons that are technically reversed because Nintendo's been doing it this way for longer. So, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- whatever. Like we in, in America, we re- we read from left to right, <laughs> not right to left. So I'm gonna need you to fix that. But no, it's actually a really, really good controller. Like it's got a great feel to it. It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a hybrid of the of the two. Like it's not as it's not as big as like an Xbox controller, but it's it it feels like an Xbox controller. I I actually really really dig it, uh, and it's getting me to play my Switch, uh, which is a, a good thing. But yeah, Bayonetta, if you haven't if you've never played one, I mean check it out. It's it's fun. Um, do you think, think it's a good? Would... If, do you think it's a good introductory game for of this ilk, or do you do you recommend uh, like a Devil May Cry? Before you no, I think this is a good enough entry, uh, a good enough point of entry. Um, if for whatever reason you're having difficulty, you can just lower the the, the difficulty level, and you'd be fine. Um, and if you're gonna, it, Devil May Cry is Devil May Cry can be very complicated at points. Like if you are if you're playing Bayonetta, you can get by with just hitting X five times, mm. right? But if you want to, you can purchase additional skills, which will, and those skills are very easy to do, right? Like it's press, press the jump button and followed by an attack button immediately, or, you know, hold down a button and then press forward and tap. Like it's, they're very easy moves to do, whereas sometimes Devil May Cry can get a little, uh, complicated depending on the, the weapon type and stuff like that but yeah i'm thinking about getting out. something to mash on so yeah it's fun it's it's really fun cool so uh real quick a little housekeeping if you go to youtube.com slash dense pixels you can check out our youtube channel which has this show every single week uh, it has uh, our some game reviews that we've done. Uh, it has some Let's Plays that we've done. And it also has our clips. And we said last week that we were doing the Sharing is Caring contest, where if you guys, we, we share two clips from each episode later in the week. And if you share out both clips, then you get entered to win. And you have to, you know, also say, hey, you know, check out Jen's Pixels, subscribe to the show, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we have six entries this week. Uh, people that have contacted us and, and told us they shared the clips and the ones we can see on Facebook. By the way, in the future, when you guys do this, just make sure that the post is public on Facebook. That way we can see it because sometimes we don't see all the shares and you got to let us know that you did it. Uh, so we have six entries. Um, I have a random number generator in front of me and we will generate a number and that number is four. And that means our man, Rashawn, you have one, sir. Congratulations. Oh, snap, son. So Rashawn is our first winner. Uh, you, my friend, are getting a free copy of Shadow of the Colossus for the PlayStation 4. So I will we will get that to you uh, post haste as soon as we can. Uh, this is something we're gonna do again this week. I will have another game to give away. Uh, let me actually look here real quick. I might I might could announce on the show what we're gonna give away. Uh, yeah, that'll really get the uh, that'll really get the, the people clamoring. <laughs> Gets the people going. Did I wait? Did did I give you Wolfenstein two, or did you buy that? No, I bought that. Well, then I'm going to give away Wolfenstein two for the PS4. Oh snap, son! So that's happening. That is happening. So okay, uh, well, yeah. Kill some Nazis and share your favorite video game podcast. That is right. So again, so Wolfenstein 2 for PS4, up for grabs. Uh, so again, we release one clip on Friday. We release one clip on Monday, uh, which is the day that we also record the show. All you have to do is share them from our Facebook page to your Facebook page and say and talk about the show and how freaking awesome we are. And you will get entered. If you share both clips, you will be entered to win uh, Wolfenstein Part 2. Uh, so also TNP studios is what we are a member of. Make sure that you go to densepixels.com slash premium 
Sign up for premium content if you've not done so yet. It is just $5 a month or $50 for the entire year. That gets you episodes of the Airing of Grievances podcast with Jay and Micah. It gets you a monthly episode of No Time to Bleed, our action movie show. It gets you weekly episodes of the Look Forward Political Podcast and monthly episodes of the Men of the Golden Tongues, which you can hear. Uh, we'll have a new episode dropping later this week sometime. Uh, myself, Micah, and Terrence uh, sat down and talked about the latest James Bond film, Spectre. Terrence, not a fan of Spectre <laughs> or James Bond. It was it was really actually kind of funny having a kind of a Bond layman on the show. It gave it a very interesting <laughs> feel coming to James Bond with that approach of someone who is only his only seen the Daniel Craig movies. <laughs> so there there are some moments where he's like, "This is ridiculous," and we're just like. Not for James Bond. It's not. Yeah. It's, what are you talking about? This is this is. Uh, we've seen this twenty three other times. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so check that out when it posts, and then of course, uh, Dense Pixels, along with all of the other free TNP Studio shows, are all on Spotify. Uh, we're also on any other podcast you choose: Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Pocket Cast is my preferred choice. But if you use Spotify for your music. You can also use it for your podcast. So subscribe to us on there uh, and check us out along with the Nerdpocalypse and Black on Black Cinema as well. So new releases this week. Oh, man. Is this <laughs> fucking game something else? Uh, Metal <laughs> Gear Survive. Micah, I know what you're saying. Metal Gear Survive? What could it be? Well, let me tell you. If... <laughs> If Metal Gear gameplay was the peanut butter and zombie survival was the chocolate, then Reese's peanut butter cups would have never been invented because why <laughs> the fuck does this game exist? <laughs> and my lord, does it look like dog shit. <laughs> so if you want to support Konami's um, you know, attempted filleting of the Metal Gear license as it languishes away from its father, Hideo Kojima, then by all means, pick up Metal Gear Survive. Uh, but please don't, because... Poor Metal Gear. Metal Gear is like the 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 child that uh, that is in the middle of a divorce between its parents, and the court has awarded custody to the bad parent. Yes, that's a great... <laughs> that's a great comparison. <laughs> Oh, yeah, please don't fucking buy it. Me and Johnny were talking, and Johnny's like, what do you think they should do? I was like, just kill it. Fucking let, let me. Shoot. But they won't. They won't, because that and PES is all they have, and, and, and fucking pachinko machines. So, <laughs> fucking horrible Metal Gear ports. Oh, uh, man. Speaking of games that look questionable, um, Rad Rogers is coming out this week. I, I've seen a little bit of this game. It is a throwback uh, action platform game starring a very young teenage-looking protagonist, but the game is apparently rated M for Mature because it's incredibly violent and uh, a little bit of mixed marketing signals there in my eyes. Uh, it's one of uh, one of those games, huh? Yeah. I saw I saw you copy-paste it and, and check that yeah, out. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on. It looks like fucking Dash from The Incredibles with a fucking attitude problem. <laughs> <laughs> bad. But apparently, thrown back to the game, the days where alliteration was all that was needed to make a video game character. And then uh, Sword Art Online, Fatal Bullet, apparently a Sword Off Online uh, spinoff game. So if you were a fan of that anime, then congratulations. Have at that this month. Uh, digital Highlights, uh, Armored Warfare, which is a TS, uh, P T -T -T PS4 tank game. It's coming out. Uh, Xenon Valkyrie Plus, uh, a roguelike platformer for PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, <laughs> the aptly named Tiles, an action puzzle game <laughs> coming out for the PS4 and Xbox Look, I like it when they get straight to the point. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to come up with a fancy name. Like, Tetris should have been called Blocks. Yeah. That I mean, been... like, fuck it. Like, let's just have every game called Game. <laughs> the Puyo Puyo could have been just called Blobs. <laughs> And then uh, some release date announcements. Uh, Rick and Morty Virtual Rickality coming to the PlayStation VR on April the 10th. I'm sure Rick and Morty fans are very excited. Um, mm. And then Mega Man, the Mega Man Legacy Collections are coming to the Nintendo Switch on May 
22nd. It almost makes me wish that I had not purchased it on PS4 because the Switch would be the correct console to play those games on. But then again, I only spent $6 on the PS4 version, so it yeah. is what it is. Uh, so that is it for updates. Let me turn it over to Micah with our headlines. So uh, a while ago, we talked about um, uh, Hawaii trying to uh, legislate video game sales uh, with loot boxes. Um, they don't want those games being sold to minors because they feel like uh, games like Star Wars Battlefront 2 are preying on uh, the the um, undiscerning consumer. Um, so they've introduced a couple of bills to essentially try to police your 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 spending habits, I guess. Uh, we have an update to that story. A spokesperson for the Entertainment Software Association uh, says that providing greater awareness and transparency about the wide range of in-game experiences is a never-ending job. The organization added that it believes self-regulation is the right way forward as opposed to regulations from the government. Quote, we strongly believe that the industry's robust self-regulatory efforts remain the most effective way to address these important issues and that system uh, and that system has proven and uh, has a proven and long record of doing so. Some consumers and parents may have questions about how loot boxes work and ESA has demonstrated a commitment to providing information to guide consumers, especially parents, in their purchasing decisions. Uh, so basically this guy is saying, look, we, you know, get your, don't tread on me. Get your fucking, <laughs> get, your, get, your, get your goddamn government out of my, uh, out of my uh, video game business. I mean, they're not wrong. Um, the last time that I that video games were facing um, this sort of scrutiny from government was probably the ratings uh, fiasco from the early nineties, yeah. and they take it upon themselves to create a regulatory board within the industry to police it themselves, and that's gone very well so far. Um, so they're not off base in suggesting that self regulation is the key. Um, I'm also going to say, and and I say this, most of you listening are aware of our political leanings. Um, for those that aren't aware, we're, we're pretty liberal folks. Um, but this is some Democrat bullshit. If I've ever <laughs> I get why, but, uh, whatever. I mean, I, I kind of don't get why. Like I hate, I hate the, uh, I hate for the, uh, libertarian to come out, but it's like, uh, this is if I put this out there, if someone wants to partake in it, then fuck it, partake in it. I mean, I shouldn't have to. I, 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 I don't know, man. I don't know. So and, they, and they, they say that it's like gambling and well, gambling isn't illegal in certain, you know, situations. And I, I don't, I don't know. Well, and what they're trying to do is trying to basically classify any game with a loot box, either with a warning that miners can't purchase it, or they could just lump it in with an M rating on us if they really wanted to. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Which I don't, you know, what, I don't know. What do you think, man? Like, like, do you think just slapping a label on the box would be enough? I mean, slapping a label on the, you don't have to do anything for me, but slapping a label on a box i mean i could see them doing that because you know it's it's the very least that you can do um but people don't read labels they, they just don't how many times has a mother come up to you we've all worked in retail at one point or another how many times has uh some parent come up to you with a game with a guy with a picture of a gun uh in one hand and like eight chicks on the other hand and and it's called like crime simulator four and and she's buying it for her you know 12 year old uh next to him and it's like did you see that big ass mature at the bottom of it or and so labels don't really do anything i don't know how i don't know what you do other than 
what was what the guy said just like hey we'll put uh you know maybe we'll put odds of you know winning a certain thing but can you imagine like like how it, it it's just too much i think i think you need to educate yourself and i think you need to i think if children are the issue i think parents really do need to take a little bit more responsibility well and here's the other thing too like even if you do regulate this and even if you do force them to restrict the sale of these games to minors it's not going to make a difference because again like you said we've all worked in retail one time or another you told the story of hey this game has lots of language and nudity and violence and guns and drug use and all this other stuff do you want your seven-year-old to have it and most parents are like whatever can you imagine trying to explain the concept of loot boxes to a lay person that doesn't understand what they are and i mean i guess you'd have to resort to the most common definition like hey this game has gambling in it but it's not really gambling either you right. know what i mean right. it's i don't know i don't know i just feel like that this is uh, i i feel like the esa or the well, whoever the esa will figure out something to prevent this from becoming a major problem but yeah it's it's i mean this hate hate to say it this way but it's just dems being dems right yeah, right yeah. now <laughs> it is <man. laughs> Not to be that guy, but uh, but yeah, this is some this is some very uh, democratic nonsense. Like we got we got to police your kids for you. Eh, education is much better. So yeah, but, yeah. But hey, who uh, who knows? They'll 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 make sure to get this done. But <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Uh, listen to look forward. Um, next up. THQ Nordic announced that it has acquired Coke Media. What? You say <laughs> what? <laughs> Not that THQ <laughs> Nordic was <laughs> able to buy out the the media division from from the Coke brothers? No, no, it's not them. Uh, uh Brad and I had a Brad and I had a little panic attack when <laughs> before we right before the show. We were like, "Wait, <laughs> what the hell?" <laughs> No, no. Coke Media is a German media enterprise uh, started in 1994 by Franz Koch, and uh, it is it is it's German, and they they <laughs> they are the parent company of uh, video game publisher Deep Silver. Um, so THQ Nordic bought them out for about 150 million dollars, and as part of the acquisition, THQ Nordic, formerly known as Nordic Games now is the owner of game series such as Saints Row, Homefront, Dead Island, Metro, et al. So you're saying that THQ, the publisher of games like Saints Row, Metro, Dead Island, and Homefront now owns the property, the rights to Saints Row, Homefront, Dead Island, <laughs> 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 Yeah, so there you go. Um, does this mean we can uh, look forward to uh, a new Saints Row game sometime in the in the future? I'll give you the uh, the Peter from Office Space uh, line. I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to it, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll get another Saints Row game. At Man, those games used to be really, really fun, and then they just kind of... And they just kind of went a little crazy. Like I remember when they were the anti Grand Theft Auto, like the the really fun Grand Theft Auto. And now they just kind of, now they just kind of made you god. Do you <laughs> think that perhaps the Western, I wouldn't even call it a surge because it's not, I would, it's not necessarily a surge, but do you think the popularity uh, that Yakuza has enjoyed in the past couple of years on the outskirts has? hurt Saints Row a little bit, especially as they've been in turmoil with this whole license shakeup nonsense. I think those games are, are uh, way too different. Um, they, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, Saints Row is a, a, an open world adventure game in the vein of Grand Theft Auto, whereas Yakuza, the Yakuza series is an open world adventure game 
in the vein of Shenmue. You know, okay. it is um it is it is a little too different. Um but I uh I just yeah, lack of brand uh lack of awareness, I think, is just has just hurt Saints Row. And they've tried to, you know, keep themselves in the spotlight by porting over some of the later titles, you know, up res them or whatever. But um yeah, I don't know. I I, I was never a huge um fan of THQ's game. Like I liked Saints Row. That was about the only one I really played. Uh, Homefront stunk. Um what were the other ones? Uh Dead Island stunk. Um yeah, I just wasn't I, a huge. I, I, remember, I remember when the first one was all the fucking rage when that game came out. Yeah, I bought into that crap. I was like, "Wow!" Yeah, like, like, yeah. So. yeah, it just wasn't. Um, it just wasn't for me. Uh, and Metro, Metro seems to be the only thing keeping them afloat. And um, I mean, in, in fairness, like this isn't. This is ideally what THQ would have been. Like, it's the it's it's the company that has these games, but without the crippling debt from all of their failed license properties. That, that's like, <laughs> so, like it's like the ideal THQ, basically. Yeah. So hey, we'll if you're see. a uh, if you're a THQ fan, bully for you. Um, I'm sure you'll be happy to get your you know, Dark Siders game or whatever. It's another another overrated series, but um, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege, a game that is just not on my radar. The uh, director says that the game will be around for the next ten years. So, this game, while I don't know too much about it, apparently is one of Ubisoft's biggest games. Uh, Ubisoft recently boasted that Rainbow Six Siege now has 27 million players. Uh, and the, what? Yeah, yeah. But the article that I'm reading this from, they make mention. You know, they say, well, it's unclear how many of these players come from free. Weekends. Oh, so they're they're going with 27 million registered accounts. right registered oh. accounts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> settle down so the uh the director of rainbow six siege is quoted as saying we've communicated already a couple of times that our vision for the game is to bring 100 operators uh or character classes as brad had to tell me before the show because I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm thinking they have like old switchboard operators fucking trying to ping shit together. But um, he also said that today we have 36 different character classes. Uh, year three will bring in eight more. Uh, that 100 is a symbol of longevity that we want to have for the game. Uh, we are saying uh, extremely loud here. There is no sequel planned. Uh, and we will be here for the next 10 years. So expect more Rainbow Six in your life for quite some time. Cut to two years from now, Rainbow Six Siege 2. <laughs> I don't know. That's a pretty bold claim to make if that's uh if you if you're gonna if you're gonna default on it, especially as the game is currently trending upwards. Right? Yeah. Did uh did Destiny make a similar claim? So Destiny 10 years. Bungie Bungie made a 10-year plan that I think people assumed meant that they would take the base game and support it for 10 years. I don't I think what Bungie more and what they clarified later is that they have a 10-year plan for Destiny, the world, the series, the universe, mm. basically. Mm. Not necessarily Destiny 1 getting extrapolated out to 10 years. Ah. Uh, I see. I see. Um, what do you think of this? Do you think this is, do you think this is just them, you know, blowing smoke up everybody's asses as they are with the 27 million players? I don't think they're blowing smoke. I think, uh, I think that this might be a business model that works for them and for this game. But if people want to take this and then they're like, oh, well, what if, you know, what if we see this with Call of Duty and Call of Duty ain't never fucking, you know not releasing a game every year because they make too much money from doing it. You're not going to see 
you know, Destiny not release a game every three years because they make too much money from doing it. You're not going to see it with Battlefield. You're not going to see it with Battlefront. Uh, it's I, I think this is a this is a business model that works for very specific franchises. And I mean, Grand Theft Auto is technically one of those franchises. If you really think about it, I mean, they released that game five years ago. And it's still going as strong as it did to the point where I think that, yeah, GTA 6 is going to come out eventually, but I think it's going to come out later than it would have had it not been for this continued uh, flow of money for Grand Theft Auto 5. So that's another game where this particular business model works for that. But I don't think it's going to be, I don't think this is the beginning of a widespread trend across the entire game industry. I think this is just a good move for, Ubisoft Rainbow Six, and look, for Rainbow Six specifically, if they did come out with Rainbow Six Siege 2, uh, it probably would do about as well as if they released another major expansion for Rainbow Six Siege, and I think that's where they're coming from, is saying, hey, we can just, it's it's cheaper, there's less overhead for us to just add content to this game and sell it, you know, for $40 instead of, you know, going through the rigmarole, making a brand new game, splitting our community and charging and selling it for sixty dollars, then forcing people to start all the way at the beginning again with this with this upgrade cycle. Yeah. Do you uh, do you wish for something like this to happen with Destiny? <sighs> like, I know you you made the comment that um, you know you don't think it would ever happen, and I agree with you. Um, but do you wish for something like this to happen? I have to say no like because it? Destiny Destiny Two, for all its faults and for you know, what people think about it is a marked improvement over Destiny 1 in areas that you can't just fix through a patch, right? Like, like it's a better looking game. It's a better performing game. Um, the Some of the systems are much better, I think, than they were in Destiny 1. And those are things, I guess the systems part you can fix, but, but sometimes you do need a new numbered game in the series. Like, it's not enough just to patch it and put out new DLC content because then you're not addressing and, and and we're not in touch enough with rainbow six to know what the complaints are from that games community. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I think that it is appropriate and it is important sometimes to have that numbered edition come out. It's not always a bad thing. Yeah. It um, also like from a psychological point, it, it, uh, it makes you like get excited for it again. You know what I mean? Right. There, there is a level of 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 buzz that you can only generate with with a new box, basically. Right. That's absolutely true. Right. Um. Last up in uh, news, the System Shock Kickstarter. How, how how dare you? How dare you move on to this story without trying to get us some money? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making money. I'm, you know, uh, you know what else is fucking hype, Micah? You know what? You know what all the kids are fucking hyped up about? <laughs> Densepixels.com slash Amazon. That's what. Listen, when you go to buy anything from Amazon.com, don't just type in Amazon.com. That shit is lame. That shit is so lame. You type in densepixels.com slash Amazon. Not only is it a more quality URL, both from a length and substance standpoint. But it takes you to our special Amazon portal, which looks exactly the same as regular Amazon. But it, you see the you know you see different products in there. That's not true. You see the products you would normally see when you're logged into your Amazon account. They give you your recommendations. They give you some offers based on stuff you bought before. You can also search for whatever you want. What's the difference? Why am I going to this website then, Micah? It seems to me like I'm just typing in more more characters for no gain. Here's the gain: you pay the same low price. And we get a small percentage of the sale. It helps support this podcast. It helps pay for hosting fees. It helps pay for equipment. Densepixels.com slash Amazon. It is lit, as the kids say nowadays. <laughs> Over there. Think about it this way. If you type in densepixels.com slash Amazon enough, your browser will remember densepixels.com slash Amazon. And then you won't even have to type everything. That's right. You could just be like D E N. Oh, there it is. So do us a favor because we need it. <laughs> <laughs> Go to densepixels.com slash Amazon. Look, Michael will come to you with his pockets turned out like the Monopoly man 
on on that one on that one community chess card. Hey, if you promise to do it, I'll even put on a top hat and a fake mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Which you'll order from that from deathpixel.com slash <laughs> exactly. There you go. <laughs> uh our one and only story in headlines or in top stories. Damn, I, I am I'm just messing that all up. Our one and only story in uh top stories. Uh, the System Shock Kickstarter that raised over $1.3 million has been, say it with me, put on hiatus. <laughs> to me, it sounds like these System Shock people have taken your money and run. And I would too, quite frankly. If you somebody gives me $1.3 million, you ain't never singing me again. <laughs> Night Dive Studios remake of System Shock has been put on hiatus, according to uh, a company statement uh, that is going to be sent out to Kickstarter backers. The game has been funded by $1.35 million that attracted 21,625 backers in the statement. From Night Dive CEO, like is even like Night Dive, as in fucking. I'm going to uh, dive into into the night with your money. <laughs> in a statement from Night Dive CEO uh, Stephen Kick, as in kicked you in the balls and then ran off with your 1.3 million dollars. Quote: I have put the game team. I have put the team on hiatus while we reassess our path so that we can return to our vision. Uh, we are taking a break, but not ending the project. Uh, System Shock is going to be completed and all of our promises fulfilled. You see, <laughs> he is taking a break because he's got a lot of your money to spend on hookers and blow. And you're not going to get your game. Uh, shockingly, they blame what they call mission creep, which basically means they promised too much stretch goals for the game's update. And now they're having trouble, you know, making it work within the parameters of the money that they received in the first place. What do they promise? The system shocking, as a matter <laughs> That's exactly what they did. They Absolutely. they they came up to you. They came up to you in a in a white suited tuxedo and threw a fucking toaster in the bathtub <laughs> and said system shocking and then just rolled the fuck out. <laughs> I wonder what did they promise that is uh Well let's worth let's let's take a look. Let's take a look. One point three million dollars. What the hell did they promise that 1.3 million dollars can't well, let's deliver? See. They, they they added uh they've added gender choice uh for the player. Uh they've added a public channel so that you know fans on Discords so that fans can bug them and hang out with them while they're trying to make their fucking game. Uh you got you got hidden in-game logs that they've added to this to this mix. Um a remix album that probably doesn't matter. Yeah, it's it's like I said, and there, there's like a big box collector's edition that a bunch of people fucking pre-ordered. Um, yeah, man, it's just like we've seen this story so many times before. This isn't new. This isn't unique. Yeah. It always seems to happen in video games more than it happens in any other project. Yeah, it's just uh, it's why why is anyone surprised at this point? There is a ten thousand dollar pledge that was backed by three backers. Um, mm. I just want to know who has that kind of money, and um, would you please send it to us? <laughs> I mean, at the very, very least. Could by the way, I, I like how the top uh, the top reward of the ten thousand dollar pledge. Come to an exclusive party hosted by key members of the System Shock team. Parentheses must be able to travel to Portland, Oregon. <laughs> 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 and 
And uh, yeah. But hey, Mikey, you, you you get yourself an in-game portrait of yourself in the game. That's worth ten G's. Gross. Um. Yeah. I just. Uh, wow. I mean, I can't say I'm. I can't say like you said. I can't say I'm surprised. Um. Now again, they do allege that this is just a hiatus and that they are going to manage somehow to uh, to make this happen. Um. Apparently. They also tried to pitch the game to publishers in order to secure more funding, but that was unsuccessful. <laughs> doesn't doesn't speak well of the game's prospects if they can't get a publisher to be like, hey, look, we got a million and a half dollars from all these people that want to see this game. Here's what we have so far. No publisher was like, sounds great. Here's more money. Sign us up. Everyone's like, mm, nah. <laughs> So yeah, and like I said, I do not mean to dance on anybody's grave here or to make light of this, but how many times are we going to see this shit happen before people realize that something needs to be done? Oh, man. Um, And maybe that something is you stop giving video game Kickstarters your hard-earned money because all you're doing is the development of a game for 18 months that will ultimately get canceled. Um, I didn't know this. They have uh, comments for this Kickstarter. Oh, I guess cool. for every Kickstarter. Yes, they do. Um, they do. Uh, this I guy can't. named Max says, "I want a refund. Yep. This game was supposed to be finished months ago." Here it comes. Uh, this oh, guy wait, says, wait, hey, Adam, oh, "I'm sorry." Hey, before before you get too far, the estimated uh, delivery date of the game December 2017. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah, December 2017. Um. Adam says, the fans of System Shock deserve a refund for this debacle. I expect the backers of this project to take legal action against you, and rightfully so. Well, see, that's the thing. Sorry, Adam, but no, you won't. It's in the, it's in the Kickstarter <laughs> terms of service that sometimes shit happens. And it's, it's your money on the line. So uh, this, guy said, this guy named Fred says, according to Kickstarter terms of service, he failed us, and we have the right to ask for refunds. We have the right to fill, file a... Well, it's supposed to be file a lawsuit, not fill a lawsuit uh, against this orchard who's not selling apples as promised. Like I said, uh, he, you can think that all he wants. I promise you that that they will. <laughs> <laughs> and, the reason, and the reason they won't is because the developers of the game can say, "Look, here's what we've done." Like it's not like they it, Mike Mike adjusted, it, you know, spoken jest earlier. It's not. It's not as if they took the money and fucking ran off to like an island somewhere. Right. Yeah, as long as they prove that they are working on it. Right. Or like, or did work on it and, and have an honest, you know, like, hey, no, we tried, but we just couldn't, we just couldn't succeed. Right. Sorry, but you don't get your money back for that. And again, that, that's that that is the nature of Kickstarter. It it is venture capitalism via crowdfunding, essentially. And sometimes when you make an investment into a venture venture as a venture capitalist, you know, the investment does not pay off. Yeah, and, you know and a lot of these comments, to be fair, are people who have that mentality. It's like, yeah, I kind of figured it wouldn't happen, but I was an investor and I invested and it didn't work out. Another guy says, I'll be patient and I'm pretty sure you guys will finish the game. Um, but then another guy is like, so can I have my 500 bucks back, please? Because I feel completely ripped off. Like if you go into this with that mentality, you have no business doing it. Uh, I'm not mad at these Kickstarter people. Yeah, you know, in all seriousness, I'm not mad at these Kickstarter people for, you know, trying to make a buck so that they can make something. Um, but if you feel like you're like you again, it's like you need to you you need to pay attention to what you're doing with your money, and you need to be educated on what you're spending your money on. If you buy that loot box, you need to know that you are not guaranteed the thing that you think you're going to get you're guaranteed something just not necessarily the thing you're going to get if you back any kickstarter you have or any indie go go or patreon whatever you need to know that you know you're just kind of throwing your money out there you're giving your money to to virtual bums now whether or not they're going to buy a sandwich or whether or not they're going to buy crack you don't know and in this case they spent 100 and uh, one point three million dollars on a bunch of crack, and you guys are boned. I said, 
<laughs> Board game Kickstarters? Hey, okay. <laughs> you can get a finished product at the end of the day. Video game Kickstarters, I would never, ever, 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 ever. It, it doesn't it doesn't matter if like if like fucking I'm trying to think of a good if, if like for some reason like Activision went bankrupt tomorrow and Bungie went on Kickstarter and was like, hey, we need help making Destiny 3. Give us your money. <laughs> I would not do it. No. I would not do it. Show me a finished product. I'll be happy to buy it. I'm not fucking funding your hopes and dreams. There you go. <laughs> that, that's all you're funding. Again, with board <laughs> games, we talked about four board games. It's different. You have a prototype. You you might even have like a pre-pro copy that you can see. You have rules. You, you, you have an outline. You have an understanding of what the product is going to be. Mm-hmm. Video games, here's what we'd like to do. Can you do it? <laughs> Maybe. We're lucky. So <laughs> stop funding these. Uh, we asked you guys question of the week. Uh, have you guys ever backed a video game Kickstarter in the past? And if so, what was your experience? Would you ever do it again? And if you never have, what would it take for a video game Kickstarter to get your hard-earned money? Justin says, most of what I've backed has been board game-related, and I've always gotten exactly what was expected. Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven second printing had some shipping issues that delayed stuff by about a month, but that's it. I got my shit delayed even further, by the way, Justin, just you know, from that campaign. Uh, the only video game related thing I backed was Shadowrun Hong Kong from Hairbrain Schemes. This was also delivered intact and on time and as expected. Thus far, I've managed to avoid all the shitstorms. And I know why Justin has, because Justin is a discerning uh, purchaser and has only, I'm sure, has only backed companies with established track records, which is also a good thing to do uh, when you're looking at Kickstarter. Yeah, our buddy Justin is not an idiot. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just gonna. Do, Justin's not gonna give ten thousand dollars to somebody and just be like, "All right, when 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 should I book my flight to Oregon <laughs> to Portland?" Yeah, so if I give you ten thousand dollars. You better comp me a Southwest ticket. Not Oops. a Spirit. Not, not a Spirit Airlines ticket. Though. Yeah, not a Spirit yeah, Airlines ticket. <laughs> uh, Trey says I have backed three games on Kickstarter and only one of them met their goal. Uh, eventually, maybe that successful one will let me avenge my father by killing Londi, while the other at least updates on occasion when that former Castlevania Konami guy is not hanging out with David Hayter. Yeah, whatever happened to Bloodstained? What's going yeah. on? We talked about that like a year ago, and they were they were they were uh, delaying it. But I yeah, heard that before. was that was the new that was the one that was going to work, right? Right. Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, Gustavo says, I would give my money to a video game Kickstarter if they show a small amount of gameplay. I don't want concept art or an idea for a game. And see, that's the problem with game Kickstarters, that they don't have anything developed. Because if they did, they wouldn't need the money. Like, that's the that's the thing. So, that's what you run into. Uh, Johnny says, it really is difficult to back up certain endeavors. We don't know where the money is going, and if we can count on the developers to follow through on their promises. But there is one thing I can promise, is that Hogan and Savage are going down. On the next time limit draw. And now, a dramatic reading. <coughs> I'm going to move the mic away. Super Brawl! Hogan! Savage! Two cages! Blood! Sweat! And, woo! Tears! I'm going to threaten a dog. Super Brawl! Super Brawl! WCW. Listen to this. <laughs> that was I love that promo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't have my gold gym t shirt on while I read that, but uh, <laughs> I fucking love that shit. If, if no one's ever seen that, I I don't know. I don't know if it's easy to find on YouTube, um, but it is the most crazy cocaine ridden Ric Flair promo. That you've ever seen in your entire life. And I highly recommend everybody watch it. Oh, goodness gracious. Amir says, backing games on Kickstarter is a Babylon thing. I don't know what that means. I don't know either. And I feel like I should. Because I don't know if it's something like... Okay, according to Urban Dictionary, Mm -hmm. Babylon Ting... Oh, it's not not Ting, it's Ting. It is actually Ting? Yes, it is Ting. It is defined as something artificially created to mindfuck the masses. Mm. Okay. The example they use, 
Bitcoins are a Babylon team. Okay. Well, that's, you know what? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, Randy says, no, I haven't. My experience was that I saved some money. And if they want my money, they're going to have to rob me. So bring it. Yo, Randy might be the blackest dude I've ever heard of in my entire life. He just <laughs> he is he is he is unapologetically black. Like that, like it might as well have been called like uh, Randy Panther, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, Camp says, uh, "I've I've never backed any of this nonsense because I don't trust people." For a game to get my money, they would have to send Letitia Wright to my apartment to hang out with me all day and play Monster Hunter World with because I'm not a creep. And I'm not going to ask her for sex from a Kickstarter, but I'm also not going to turn it down from her. Yeah. <laughs> what the Cam, Cam has had a transformative experience this past weekend. <laughs> Cam is woke. Uh, Black Panther has, 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 has awoken a new side of Cam. Yeah, man. Cam, Cam, Cam was already a cool dude, but now Cam is like, I feel the fucking plight, man. I get it. <laughs> uh randy also says here's proof that piccolo is black and apparently tupac did the voice of piccolo for an episode of dragon ball z is that true that is not true tupac played a character named piccolo uh, and i think it was poetic justice i see but it says one episode so it would have had to been a tv show Huh. Yeah. I, well, yeah. That's kind of weird. I wonder why they say that, but, oh no, that's right. It's not poetic justice. He played Piccolo, a character from a different world. And he was, um, Jada Pinkett Smith's like ex-boyfriend. Was he known at the time or did he just happen to show up on a different world? No, he was, he was Tupac. Okay. Yeah. He was Tupac. And yeah, I remember because Jada would always talk about Piccolo back in Baltimore because her character was from Baltimore also. Mm -hmm. And she would always talk about uh, Piccolo from Baltimore. And you always hear about Piccolo, Piccolo, Piccolo. And she was dating this dude who nobody knows the name of, but everyone has seen in every like black thing in the 90s, right? Like he's like a pretty Ricky like type dude, right? And all of a sudden, Piccolo shows up at Hillman. Yeah, I remember that now. I remember that. Go ahead, Randy. See, that's again, that's black as shit, Randy. Like, I get it. I get it. Uh, Jake says Shenmue lives until our wallets die or Landy, and I'm comfortable with either one. <laughs> that is the only tough part, too, with the video game Pixar is even the good ones, they go radio silent for a while. So it is uh it is tough. Uh Malcolm says, I've never backed the game. Shoot, I really even pre with Dragon Ball being the exception. Now, there was an indie push to get a new Streets of Rage. Now I'm interested. Otherwise, these colonizers aren't getting my money. <laughs> I'm 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 uh fascinated that like calling white people colonizers is going to be a thing now. It is going to be a thing. So just get ready to accept it. I'm fine. I mean, let's see. My ancestry is Irish. Who didn't colonize it too much? But there's also a lot of Dutch in me, and they <laughs> no. I'll allow it. Uh, Leonardo says that's why you only donate a dollar. See, but the problem is that only gets you project updates. It doesn't get you. It doesn't get you the product itself. At the end of the day, so uh, Michael says if they offered a reward to punch Cliffy B in the face, <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> George uh, keeps it short and sweet. He just says, nah, fam. <laughs> and Gaston says, I've never backed the game. Probably never will. There are too many examples of people wasting money, even if it doesn't always happen. So for me to kickstart something, it would have to be at least a trailer before they got my money on top of being something that I actually want. And those were your guys' thoughts on Kickstarter. Thank you very much uh, for your responses to the question of the week. Uh, Micah, what would it take for you? Because I mean, because I mean, I I would figure that Shenmue three would have been the thing to get you over the edge. So, what would it take for you to back a video game Kickstarter? Nothing, man. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna throw my money. The only time I would invest in something is if I could get like a financial return. I'm not gonna invest in something that is um that won't benefit me monetarily. 
because that's just an IOU. Like I just bought an IOU from somebody. Like I'm not doing that. I'm not going to buy a product that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> it just it just doesn't make sense to me. Like I would buy something that already existed but is sold out because it already existed. It has proven to be you know that it could be manufactured. Um, that's like me saying, yeah, I'm just gonna pay for uh, uh, a hover bike. <laughs> I'm I'm going to I'm going to kickstart a lightsaber. Like a real working lightsaber like in Star Wars. Like I no, like a shit like that doesn't or, exist. Or a laser laser razor. Yeah, or a laser razor, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, is that is that French press kickstarter the Jayback still going on? I'm going to have to double check that. I think that it is cuz I think I might get one of those. Hey, yo, just buy a French press. I have one. I want this one. What is what is the big deal about this one? So this one, first of all, the the bottom opens out so that you can clean the grounds much easier when you're done. It has an hourglass, a magnetic hourglass on the side that you can flip over. That is that is a perfect three and a half minute hourglass, which is the exact time that the coffee needs to steep inside of the press before you before you press it down and pour your cup. This seems like a lot of work for coffee. Now I'm a I'm a new coffee drinker. Oh, I really? uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, uh, I'm a brand new coffee drinker and I, I don't drink like regular coffee yet. You know, I gotta get, I gotta ease myself in there. So I go to Starbucks and I get like a cafe mocha or stuff like that. Just I mean, that's, with- that's one way to do it. I'm, I'm much more of an advocate of just fucking cut to the chase, drink your black coffee, grit your teeth and bear it because eventually it gets really good. But you have to, you have to, you have to get. It's like beer too. Like beer's the same way. Nobody likes beer the first couple times they drink beer, but you acquire the taste for it. And then once you, because, because here's the thing, coffee drinkers, you, people that put the cream and sugar in their coffee, fuck out of here with all that. <laughs> you're fucking diluting that shit, and 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 you're not a coffee drinker then at that point. You're just fucking drinking, you know, brown water with cream and sugar. In it. Fuck that. You want to <laughs> drink coffee? You gotta taste the coffee. And the only time you taste in the coffee is if it's black. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Brad and Heavy D both <laughs> like their coffee with no sugar and no cream. That's the those are the type of girls that get down on their team. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll have to turn you on to some good brand. We'll we'll talk about that not on the show. Unless you guys want us to at some point, not maybe down the road we'll have a coffee corner. We'll have, we'll have the rope J in there. This shit as well because he won't allow it to stand without him uh without him being here. Uh make sure you leave us a five-star review on iTunes. We will read it on the air. Uh follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Dense Pixels. Subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh we have a Dense Pixels Twitch channel just for the show. And then of course uh, we have our own personal ones as well. I am Dense Pixels Brad, Terrence is Apparition 410. Micah is Dense Black Nerd and Carrie is Suffolk's Carrie. So thank you guys very much for listening and uh, we will see you next week. See you.